We associate being shot at dawn or being shot for desertion during conflict with the First World War. During this, a number of servicemen fighting for the Allied nations were shot dead, being tied to a stake and executed by a firing squad for cowardice, desertion or other offences considered shameful by the High Command. However, there were a number of death sentences handed out to soldiers during the Second World War, but only one was carried out by the American Army. 49 men were sentenced to death for crimes, but it was only the execution of Eddie Slovik, a young 24-year-old man from Michigan, which was carried out. The death penalty in this case was incredibly harsh, considering during World War II, it was used mostly for cases such as murder. So join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Eddie Slovik, the American shot for desertion. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Eddie Slovik was born in 1920 in Detroit, inside of a Polish-American family. As a child, he was often in trouble with the police, being known for being a local troublemaker, and he was first arrested at just the age of 12, accused of stealing brass after being caught inside of a foundry. As his teenage years continued, he had a number of run-ins with the law, and was arrested a number of times for theft and disturbing the peace, and in October 1937, at the age of 17, he was sent to prison. He was then paroled the following year, but he then stole a car in 1939, and crashed it with his friends whilst intoxicated, and he was sent back to prison. Three years later, Eddie Slovik was given parole again, and he worked in Michigan as a plumber, and he met his wife. They married, however Slovik was a felon and a criminal, and with his past record, he was classed at the time as morally unfit for duty within the US Army. However, he was then reclassified and was drafted into the US Army in January 1944. He underwent basic training and then following the Normandy landings was sent to France to join in the fight to relieve the country from Nazi occupation they had been facing for years. He joined the 28th Infantry Division and was then assigned to the 109th Infantry Regiment in August 1944. He was ultimately drafted to fill in the need for personnel inside of the army following losses and he had been trained as a rifleman but he was someone who hated guns. As a replacement, he was not the most respected by officers, especially as his division had suffered huge losses in France. Whilst he was en route to his assigned unit, Slovik and his friend John Tankey, who he'd met during training, were caught up in fighting. They were caught up in an artillery attack in the night, and they became separated from Company G. In the morning, the company advanced, and left Slovik and Tankey behind. The pair then found a Canadian military police unit inside of a town, and stayed with them for six weeks. Tanky did write to the regiment to explain where the pair were, but the Canadians made arrangements for them to catch up with their unit on the 7th of October 1944. The pair joined their original regiment, and no charges were brought, as replacements getting lost early on was a rather regular occurrence. But the next day, Slovik committed a fatal act that would be used against him, as he was passed over to his original unit. On the 8th of October, he told his company commander that he was too scared and frightened to be a soldier inside of a frontline rifle company, and he then asked to be reassigned to a unit to the rear of the action and the attacks. His commander was rather hesitant, and Slovik then said he would run away if he was assigned to a frontline unit, and he even asked his captain if this would be desertion and be liable for court martial. The commander said this would be desertion, and then refused to place him in a rear division but sent him to the frontline rifle group. Eddie Slovik was true to his word, and the following day after receiving news, he deserted from his unit. His friend Tanky tried to convince him to stay, but Slovik absconded with his mind made up, and he walked to the rear of the advancing soldiers, and walked miles in the wrong direction, and then approached a cook with a note. The cook belonged to the 112th Infantry Regiment, and was given a note that almost signed Slovik's death sentence. The note read, I, Private Eddie D. Slovik, confess to the desertion of the United States Army. At the time of my desertion, we were in Alboeuf, France. I came to Alboeuf as a replacement. They were shelling the town and we were told to dig in for the night. The following morning they were shelling us again. I was so scared, nerves and trembling, that at the time the other replacements moved out, I could not move. I stayed there in my foxhole till it was quiet and I was able to move. I then walked into the town. 
Not seeing any of our troops, I stayed overnight in a French hospital. The next morning I turned myself over to the Canadian Provost Corps. After being with them for six weeks, I was then turned over to the American military police. They turned me loose. I told my commanding officer my story. I said that if I had to go out there again, I'd run away. He said there was nothing he could do for me, so I ran away, and I'll run away again if I have to go out there. It's bizarre how a cook was presented with this, but he then took Slovak to a military policeman, and then the company commander. He was told to get rid of the note before he was taken under arrest, and he refused to do so, before he was given another chance to tear the note up and return to his unit. He was even offered the chance to face no charges, but for some reason, Slovik, who most probably was terrified with facing frontline action and intense fighting, continued to refuse to tear up the note. The note was then seen as a key piece of evidence that was incriminating, and even the division's judge, General, asked him for one final time to get rid of the note and to rejoin his unit, and he continued to refuse. He also offered to transfer Slovik to a different division for a fresh start, where no one would know anything about his past, but Slovik took his chances. He thought the worst he would get was prison time, which he favoured over facing combat, but he replied saying, I'll take my court-martial. The 28th Infantry Division, that Slovik briefly belonged to, were due to attack in the Hercon Forest, which saw bloody and deadly fighting, as the Americans advanced against a German army. It was expected that fighting would be incredibly torrid, and the Germans dug in wishing to defend their positions. Some soldiers did become very scared of this offensive, such was the brutality and the high casualty rates, and at the time there was a slight rise in desertion in the units. Slovik, who was seen as a complete coward by officers, was charged with desertion and was tried by court-martial on the 11th of November 1944. He was tried by staff officers as combat officers were redeployed onto the front lines, and at the trial the prosecutor portrayed the events, showing Slovik to have been a coward who had planned to run away. He decided not to testify, hoping just for prison time, however during the verdict things took a rather shocking turn. The nine officers presiding over the case sentenced Slovik to death for his desertion. Death sentences were not completely rare during the time in the US Army at this part in the Second World War, but they were never carried out, but Slovik is the only exception. He appealed to the Supreme Allied Commander Dwight Eisenhower for clemency, but Eisenhower confirmed that the execution should go ahead. He deemed this was acceptable, as during the offensive in France, and also the Battle of the Bulge, the desertion rates were becoming higher, and were becoming more of a problem because of the fact the fighting was incredibly intense, with casualties falling all around. Eisenhower wished to deter other soldiers from dereliction of their duties. Slovik honestly believed he would just have been given a dishonourable discharge and time in prison, which was also given. However, as an ex-prisoner and a convict, he was used almost as a case study to put off possible deserters. The 28th Infantry Division even had examples of soldiers wounding themselves to avoid some intense fighting, but the treatment of Slovik was very harsh at the time. It's almost as if his past as a criminal came back to haunt him, confirming his death sentence. He was remanded in custody for a number of months before his execution day came. On the 31st of January 1945, near to the village of St. Mario Mines, a firing squad was gathered. Slovik was brought out in front of the soldiers who were there to execute him, and he said to them, They're not shooting me for deserting the US Army. Thousands of guys have done that. They just need to make an example of somebody, and I'm it because I'm an ex-con. I used to steal things when I was a kid, and that's what they are shooting me for. They're shooting me for the bread and chewing gum I stole when I was 12 years old. He firmly believed he was a scapegoat. Military tradition dictated that Slovik was to be stripped of his uniform and all military insignia and buttons. This happened, but the weather was freezing. He was then wrapped in a blanket to shield him from the cold, and then led into the courtyard of a house chosen for the execution. This house was selected as it had a high wall that would protect the execution from the eyes of French witnesses, and also the wall could stop ricochets. Slovik was then taken to a post and was strapped to it with belts, with one being placed under his arms and then hung onto a spike to stop his body slumping over. He was secured tightly to the post, and then a soldier placed a black hood over his head. A priest who had been selected to accompany Slovik said, 
Eddie, when you get up there, say a little prayer for me, referring to heaven. And his last words were, OK, Father, I'll pray you don't follow me too soon. Twelve soldiers chosen from the 109th Regiment were then readied, and they stood with their M1 Garand rifles primed and ready. Eleven of these had been loaded with one round, and one had been loaded with a blank. Then the command was given for the firing squad to fire. They shot straight into their target, with eleven bullets hitting him, with at least four being fatal. He was shot from high in the neck, the left shoulder, over his chest and under the heart. It was said by an American doctor that he had not been immediately killed, but as the firing squad were being ready to fire another volley of shots into Slovik, he then passed away. The whole process took around 15 minutes, and he was then buried inside an American cemetery, alongside other men executed for crimes, such as murder. After the Second World War, it was noted that over 2,000 people were tried purely for military offences. 49 of these were sentenced to death, but 48 of these sentences were then commuted, but only one, Eddie Slovics, was carried out during the conflict. It's believed his death was an injustice, and that he was made a victim of being a scapegoat, and that his past as a convict definitely went against him. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.